This video is going to cover creating tags in order to implement a many-to-many -many system in Ruby on Rails. We're going to do this by giving each post many tags and each tag many posts with a taggable join table. What this means is that you'll have a list of posts like right here where each one has one or more tags. If you click on a post, you see all of its individual tags and clicking on one of the tags takes you to that specific tag. You can also uh, go to the tag and visit the post by clicking read more, which gives you that entire sorting system like that. We can also come into our posts and create a new post. I'll call this one a demo post for YouTube. Put some words here in the body and then I'll say this is a demo test post. So I'll give it three different tags. If I click create post, you can see right here in the console, if I zoom in a bit, it inserts into posts, the title and the body, but not the tag. And then it gives the taggables a post ID and a tag ID, and it creates three different taggables. If we come in here and we update this, we get rid of the post taggable. It will delete the taggables and then recreate them. This just ensures that you always have the current list of taggables created. So let's go ahead and let's actually code this up now that you know what you're getting into. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this server over here and I'll open up the blank project that I have on the left right here. We're gonna start by full screening this and we're just going to generate our scaffolds. So for this, we're gonna say Rails G scaffold. We'll create a post, give each post a title of type string by default and a body of type text. We'll then go ahead and we'll run a Rails G scaffold for the tags and we'll give, well, we'll say tag because it needs to be singular. We'll give each tag a name and I guess that's it. And now we can generate the join table, which will be a Rails G model. We'll call this taggables or I guess taggable. We'll give it a post colon belongs to and a tag colon belongs underscore to. You now go ahead and run a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate the database. And now we can run a Rails S to start the server because we're basically done in our console. We come over to config and routes.rb. Let me bump up the font size one and full screen this. We just want to create a root, which will be the post controller index action. We'll then come over to our app and our models and our post.rb because we need to make sure that the post belongs to, or the post has uh, many taggables as well as the tags. So we'll just say this has many colon taggables. And we'll say this is dependent colon colon destroy. And then it needs to has many tags through taggables. So this is our join table, which of course already belongs to a post and belongs to a tag. So this is sort of how we're circ circumventing the idea that a post can't have many tags and the tags can't have many posts. We do an intermediate table right here where we just make them each have many of these taggables that then belongs to each of the other ones. And you'll see how we use this in a little bit here. But now we need to sort of take this taggables idea from this post and put it in our tag. So we can actually just take this, paste it in here. Instead, we'll just say this has many posts. And that's basically it for our tag.rb. Next thing we wanna do is come down to our views and our posts and our post form. And in here, we just wanna come down to the bottom. We'll create an empty div. And then we just wanna give this a form.label for the tag with the style of display colon block. And that's just to give it a little bit of styling so it matches this other default stuff. And then we wanna give it a form.text underscore field for the tags. And we'll go with what GitHub Copilot generates, which is a value. If we get rid of this, it will then say post.tags. And actually this isn't what we want. I think it'll also generate a post.tags.map with the name where it does a join and then we get rid of this space. So we just set the value equal to post.tags.map and colon name dot join and then a comma in quotes. And all this does is it gives us a comma separated list of tags. Once that's done, we can then come into our controller because we need to allow these parameters in the post controller. So let's scroll down to the bottom here. Uh, this is actually the tags controller, I lied. We're gonna go into the post controller. And in the post controller, we're going to allow the tag string, even though we won't be using it as a tag string. 
And instead, what we'll do is we'll come into the uh, create action and the update action. And for each of these, we'll do something like create underscore or underscore delete underscore posts underscore tags, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it allows us to grab the params with the post and the tags. And what we'll do is we'll just say, first we delete the, um, the existing tags or the existing taggables, and then we create new taggables that we assign to this post. And we're gonna do the same thing for the update. So I'm actually gonna grab this line, come into update and paste it in here as well. Then I'm gonna grab this, scroll down to the bottom, do a def for it. Uh, and it does need to take in those arguments, which is going to be the post and the tags. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the tags, split them by the comma. Uh, I actually don't like how it's doing this. I'm gonna copy my code from over here because GitHub Copilot did it better last time. We're gonna create a tags variable and then we're gonna iterate through each of the tags. And then we'll do a post.tags where we push in a new tag that we either find or create by the name. So if a tag with the name already exists, then we just find it. If it doesn't exist, then we create it. And then we can come in here and we can say end. The only other thing we really want to do at the top here is just say post.tags.destroy all. So this is where we clean up our existing taggables. Then we, so at the top here, what I want to do is say post.tagables.destroy underscore all, just to destroy all of those taggables. Now that that's done, we can come over here and refresh the application to go into a blank app and see how much I've broken. So I'm gonna bump up the font size a bit and we'll just give this a shot. We'll say this is a test post with a case body. We'll give it two tags. One will be test and one will be case. And then we'll click create post. And here we can see that we're getting an error with an undefined method each for the test and the case. So to fix this, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're not passing in this uh, tags parameter. If I say post underscore params, I scroll in, you can see we have the title and the body, but we still have the uh, tags here, even though we're inserting them with the uh, iteration of all of the tags, we're trying to insert the actual string as if it's an array, and that doesn't make a lot of sense. So instead what we can do is we can come in here and in the create, we can just say this needs a dot accept tags. And in the update, this also needs a dot accept tags. We can save that refresh the page, try another test case with a test tag and a case tag, click create post. And that was now created. Now, of course we aren't displaying them yet, but we can see right here that we did insert into taggables two times. And this seems correct with a tag ID of one and a tag ID of two. So let's try to display these tags. To do this, we're gonna come down to our posts and our post partial to show off what the tags look like. For this, I'm just going to grab a small snippet from the other screen so that we don't have to sit here and watch me type this all out. So we start off with a strong for the tags and then we iterate through each of the post tags. We then say, okay, this has a link to the tag itself, which will do a link to the tag, and then we'll just give it a style of text decoration, none. We can then give it a span with the actual tag name inside of that link, which will just have a class of tag, and we'll, we'll cover that CSS in a second. And then it just has a tag.name.capitalize for the span. And then it has two end tags at the bottom here, one for our link and one for our loop. So if we do that, we come over here and we refresh the page. We now have a link to the first tag and a link to the second tag. And that takes us to those tags as we would expect, but we do want to style this. I'm not gonna cover the styling because it's just one CSS class, but I will at least show you what it looks like if you want to copy the five second styling that I have there. So it's just a background color, a font color, the padding in the margin, which sets the size, a border radius, which makes it a bit round, and then a display of inline block, which just makes sure that it looks decent when it's spaced out. Now, if we refresh, we get those ugly little blue buttons that we can click to go to the tags. So that takes care of the actual post. Now let's do the tags themselves. So for this, we'll come into the tags and the tag partial here. 
And we'll do the same thing we did last time. We'll just paste in some of the code. So we say tag.taggables. So this is where we're actually grabbing the taggable itself from the tag model instead of grabbing the post. Just to show you sort of how you can do this. So here we say tag.taggables.each do taggable. And that gives us access to the post itself, just like how we have access to the tag in the post. So we can then say, let's render the post partial give the post as the taggable.post. So we're just grabbing the post that belongs to this taggable that belongs to this tag, which seems a little bit convoluted, uh, but this is the other way you can look at this. We can then say, here's a link to read more, which is just the taggable.post again. And then we'll add in a horizontal line to sort of give us a natural break in the content. And then we'll add in the end tag right here. And come over to our tags, refresh, and now we have a link to the post, which has the title and the body, as well as its tags, which of course is a recursive link. It will take you back to here, or you can navigate between the tags, and then you can click on read more. Now, the beauty of this is if we come over to our tags, just the tags index page, all of our posts will also be listed here as uh, a, a post under each of the tags. Now, of course, you get a bit of duplication here. You could filter this a bit, but as a starting point, this sort of covers how you would create a tag system with the URLs uh, that allow you to navigate a bit more and uh, tag your posts as appropriate. Now, the last thing to really check is if we click on show this post and we destroy this post, the post was successfully destroyed. And if we scroll up here, our taggables are in fact destroyed when we destroy the post, which is cleaning up our uh, models, but we're not destroying the tags, which is important because deleting a post should not delete its tags probably uh, because you might have, you know, one post in a sea of a hundred posts that belong to a specific tag. You don't want to delete that tag if one of those posts gets deleted and vice versa. If you delete one tag, it shouldn't delete the post because that post might belong to other tags. This is sort of a first step that you can take here if you're using a many-to-many -many or if you want to use a many-to-many. -many. Now, the other thing to consider is this takes us to tag slash one. If you're interested in making it take you to tag slash test maybe, so the name of the tag, I would suggest using a gem like friendly ID that lets you use the attribute names as the URL parameters. And if you're interested in that, I actually have a video that covers friendly ID in Rails 7 that I'll have on the screen right now.